Hi folks, this is Jason. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. Um, I just want to share with you um, there are there is a sort of major school of textual criticism that goes right back to the 19th century uh, which is Westcott and Hort and basically Westcott and Hort said that the oldest manuscripts are the best and that means we've got uh, ancient manuscripts of the New Testament from the Alexandrian school of, of copying. Um, however at the time of Westcott and Hort, there was also a belief that the vast majority of texts that we have of the New Testament were from the Byzantine school of copying. But because these texts, uh, we begin to have a lot more of these texts in the maybe 9th century onwards, uh, it was regarded that these texts, even though the, the majority of the New Testament are from this kind of school, that they are not the oldest and so textual criticism went down the line of Westcott and Hort away from the Byzantine text. So where does that get us? Well what that gets us is that modern scholarship will say well the last ending of Mark is is not in the early uh, manuscripts therefore the last ending of Mark is, is not Mark. However what the modern scholars don't tell you is 95% of the ancient manuscripts that we have of the New Testament do have the last ending of Mark. So what I'm trying to get at here is that there is a school of textual criticism that the modern scholars are not letting you know about. A school of textual criticism that scientific way of looking at textual criticism. Um, now an article, uh, a very extensively researched article by New Testament textual critic Maurice A. Robinson is called the New Testament textual criticism the case for the Byzantine priority. He writes from the beginning of the modern critical era in the 19th century the Byzantine text form has had a questionable reputation associated it was with the fact the faulty Textus Receptus edition which stemmed from Erasmus or Eximus on critical selection of a small number of late manuscripts here after MS scholars in general have tended to label the Byzantine form of text late here it is late and secondary due to both to the relative age of the extant witnesses which provided the majority of its known support and in the internal quality of its readings as subjective we perceived Yet even the numerical basis of the Byzantine text form rests primarily upon late um, minuscules and unicils of the 9th century and later the antiquity of the text reaches at least as far back as its predecessor exemplars of the late 4th and early 5th century. So basically what Maurice A. Robertson is, is saying here is that modern textual criticism, rejection of the Byzantine text as being more helpful for the reconstruction of the New Testament text uh, is faulty. That actually we need to take more seriously the Byzantine uh, text, not just because there's more of them, uh, but for very good reasons that they are actually do go back to uh, later antiquity. So he write, he reads in his Conclusion: Every variant unit evaluated favorably from a Byzantine priority perspective, and all its units should be units should be carefully examined when attempting to restore the original text. End of quote. So that's an article that you can go and read. It's called "The New Testament Textual Criticism: New Testament Textual Criticism: The Case for Byzantine Priority." So I would encourage you to go and read it. 
It's extremely difficult article to read, uh, but if you're interested in textual criticism, that's a very helpful place uh, to start. Also, um, there is a, an interview with Maurice Robertson, part one by David Allen Black and part two, so go and have a look at that. Interview with Maurice Robertson, part one and two, David Allen Black. Uh, class to the congregation with a Greek famili familiarity course on the side. We laypersons were urged to purchase various interlinear Greek New Testament, which gave us the benefit of a complete Greek New Testament text with a literal English meaning for every Greek word and a brief but complete lexicon and significant for text critical purposes, a collection of variant readings adopted by 19th century scholarly editors. The existence of those numerous variant readings um, made me encouraged my curiosity and I wondered which reading was correct or incorrect and why. Some editors preferred one reading but others chose to remain at various points with the TR. I knew nothing of manuscript text types or text critical principles. All I knew was the what appeared in Bury and he stated that the various editors cited the footnotes each had published an edition of the New Testament, Greek New Testament. And he goes on to to say how he got into this textual criticism. He goes, is your case for Byzantine priority prompted by theological reasons or inerrancy or divine preservation? He goes, short answer is no, the long answer is more complex. Following my conversion, I had become convinced of the reliability and authority of scripture. I then basically held to a somewhat inerrant uh, viewpoint. Certainly my view regarding scripture drove my interest regarding both its original language and the question of which readings were original. At that time the readings my the readings my theological views approved were not those of the Byzantine text form or the TR but the predominantly Ex Alexandrian variants cited in various footnotes and in the main text of the UBS edition. Certainly my theological presuppositions did not compel a position regarding a traditional form of the text nor a preference for any specific manuscripts or text types, nor what variant reading should be preferred at any given point. Even today my view of biblical inerrancy is not affected by my text critical viewpoint, nor does my view regarding inerrancy determine my text critical viewpoint. In theory and actual historical practice any text or manuscript can be accepted as God breed and theological sufficient for teaching and for proof in, in instruction of righteousness. In other words, such MS and text exist as valid witnesses to biblical authority, despite various non scribal errors or disagreements among them. In this regard, no MS or text fails in its aggregate to reflect an authoritative witness to God's written revelation of truth. Tre textual criticism exists primarily to sort out the differences and out of many reasonably good and accurate texts to determine more precisely which sequence of readings appears most closely to reflect the original form of the text as given by re Revelation. What are the criteria for determining the date of reading the Byzantine text? Let me return the question. What are the criteria for determining the date of any reading as opposed to the date of an existing witness? The only certainty is that a reading appearing in MS is either older than the MS or created by the scribe of that MS. A reading found in 2nd century MS is certainly at least that old, but not necessarily any older, necessarily original. Equally, a reading in the 12th century MS might be old and possibly original according to some textual critics. Most critics acknowledge that most readings found in MS of any era, regardless of text type, have demonstrable existence in NS versions or fathers dating from the 2nd and 3rd centuries. Can
parallel and others rightly posted that except for late singular or near singular readings all meaningful variants are old and originate before AD 200. Readings dated solely on the basis of MS age do not carry very far when attempting to determine the autograph or original reading. So that's just a little bit about the Byzantian uh, school of textual criticism and so I'll read again the titles of these articles and uh, you can go and research it. So basically when you're hearing modern scholars today talk about textual variants, remember there's a different school of textual criticism that's not he heard much in the halls of academia and it's a very solid scholarly school that's being ignored. Defend the Bible in a better way. And I think Morris A. Robinson can help you in this. New Testament textual criticism, the case for the Byzantine priority, Morris A. Robinson. And then if you also type in interview with Maurice Robinson, part one, David Allen Black on davidblackonline.com. Okay. And there you can read part one and there's part two of an interview with Maurice Robinson. So there we are. Um, I'm doing textual criticism in the canon at the moment because I'm just looking into it in a deeper way.